This is the DJ Bob Show. So a couple weeks ago, I found this trailer on the internet for the new Netflix show called The Healing Powers of Dude. It's about an 11-year-old boy with social anxiety going to middle school for the first time. I always loved those coming-of-age stories, and I knew that I had to cover this because it covered so many things that meant a lot to me. Disability, inclusion, tons of stuff. It's just great for families. And I knew I had to track down the creators, and they're here with us now. Introduce yourself, guys. I'm Sam Lindenberg-Weisberg. And I'm Erica Spates. And we uh, co-created uh, the show, The Healing Powers of Dude, on Netflix. I'm so happy to have you guys here. You have no idea. We're very happy to be here. Yes, thanks for having us. How did you guys start working together? Well, we, we met in graduate uh, film school at Florida State uh, in Tallahassee, Florida. And we became friends first and were working on each other's projects there. Uh, eventually started dating. And then we, after graduating, decided to move out to L.A., uh, wrote a spec script for The Office together because that was our favorite show, just sort of on a whim. Got some good feedback from the fellowships and some other people. Uh, wrote an original script that we got some good feedback on and sort of just snowballed from there. And we became a, at the time, dating writing team and eventually a married writing team. And, you know, got our, an agent and our first writing job eventually on the Nickelodeon show Victorious, which was interesting because we had our scripts that we wrote that we got the job for were not sort of kid scripts at all, but they just sort of liked our writing and like, you know, our humor. And so that sort of began our path sort of in that kid and family space that we are now. So what's it like writing for an already established show that's been on for a few years? That can be difficult sometimes because, you know, you obviously have to watch. I think we I think it was the second season that we joined from Victorious. That makes sense. Uh, or maybe the third. But there, there was enough. There was a lot of episodes we had to watch to sort of get a sense of all the characters and all the jokes and storylines. But it can be challenging because, you know, you're coming sort of in at a point when obviously so many storylines and jokes have already been pitched in the room that weren't even used. So you're having to sort of hope that you're pitching only new stuff. And it's, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but it was a, a good group of people there. And it was, an, it was a, a good first job to sort of get our feet wet. There are so many great characters on Victorious. Who were your favorite characters to write for? I'm curious for the both of you. Uh, I mean, um, Robbie was really fun. Uh, and, uh, and Rex, which Rex was actually voiced by uh, one of the writers. And he was really funny. Um, so they were really funny together. And then... Um, Jade, I think... Yeah. I liked writing for Jade, but maybe because oh, I'm so very similar to her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that show, and I'm happy that it's getting a resurgence on Netflix. Yeah, it is. It's Yeah. I was just talking to my cousin who's 23, and she watched Victoria since she was younger, and she's just been re-binging it on Netflix because she is so excited it was back on there. So let's talk more specifically about this show. Tell everybody what it's about. The anxiety attack that Noah faces, and just everything about the show in general. Sure. Well, just starting with the whole show, and then I'll let Erica talk about the anxiety attacks. You know, it's based on my younger brother Noah, who has social anxiety disorder, and it was a when he same same sort of time when he started sixth grade is when it manifested for him, and it was a really tough time for my family. So it was always something that Erica and I had thought about to be a great thing if we could incorporate into a show somehow. And then, you know, there was matching it up with the idea that he could have a dog that could help him on his journey and be voiced by sort of a funny actor and sort of all those, that was the initial kernel for the show. And then, you know, kind of went from there. But when we were developing it um, and we talked about doing his anxiety attacks, we was something where we were like, we didn't want it to just be showing somebody having sort of a panic attack you know, because it's not sort of a fun thing to watch. So, you know, Erica, do you want to? Yeah, you know, we we talked about, especially because a lot of it's internal, you know, and this is a comedy, watching a kid look scared or nervous was not going to work. And we're like, well, the other issue is, because it's so internal, how do we show people that this isn't just someone being nervous? How serious social anxiety disorder is for someone who has it? And so we, we started talking about these sort of 
visualizations of Noah's feelings. Like when he has to step into homeroom, but then he feels like he's being pulled into quicksand because that's how hard it is for Noah to make that step into the classroom. Or he's in school and a group of kids come and crowd around him wanting to get to know him, but it feels like zombies are attacking him. So we tried to, you know, each moment we thought about what is the feeling here and then how can we visualize that feeling in an entertaining way because you know it's, we also want to be entertaining and we want to be funny uh when it's the right moment to be funny so uh that's how we came up with those and what i love about the cast of kids that you have is that they don't act like kid actors they're not cute they're not looking for laughs they're just being yeah. real kids they're authentic selves and i love that uh you know all of we have a great group of friends we have noah uh who's our main character who has social anxiety disorder but he also uh loves music he bonds with his dad going to concerts he uses drumming as a way to kind of get out of his head and we use that in the show where he can just go and drum and just focus on that and get all those feelings out. Um, and he, you know, he, you can sort of see in his room, we don't get into too much, but there's a lot of like pop culture references and fantasy and stuff um, that he's into. But he's just a really sweet, caring, empathetic kid um, who loves his family and um, really wants to make friends. That's the whole start of our show is, He's been homeschooled and he just wants to have friends. He's, you know, at that age where it's like incredibly important to have that group of friends. And then he gets to meet two of his new friends at when he does go to school. And the first one is Simon, who um, Mauricio Lara plays Simon. And Simon just has no filter and can't help himself and gets very excited and very big and can talk a lot. And for someone with social anxiety disorder, that can be incredibly overwhelming because they're basically opposites. But that we thought that would be so interesting and that it would be a good way for Noah to make friends because Simon just doesn't give up. You know, he doesn't get offended. He just keeps going. He wants to be your friend so badly, um, which is such an endearing part of Simon. And he's a good friend. He's loyal and he cares, which was important for all of our friends. Also Amara, um, played by Sophie Kim, who is in a wheelchair, and that does not get in her way at all. She's incredibly smart, talented, confident. She does well in school. She does musical theater. She sings, um, like Simon, but in a slightly different way. She, you know, cannot be stopped. <laughs> She's very headstrong. And these two characters just felt like the kind of friends Noah needed to get through all the obstacles of middle school that he would have to face with, you know, not because middle school itself is so hard, but also for someone with social anxiety disorder. Finding Noah must have been really difficult. I mean, you have to find an actor who can emulate the feelings of someone with social anxiety. And Jake did it perfectly. Tell me about Jake. Jake is a very thoughtful, smart young man. And he was immediately, you know, so good at taking notes because it is such a difficult part for a young actor to play. I mean, it's someone who has social anxiety disorder, which is is very real and very serious. And when someone has it, it, it can be severe, like it was for Sam's brother, Noah. And, you know, and but we also are writing a comedy. So that, that was a very tricky thing to find a balance for. And he was just so great and so responsive as we and the directors uh, and Netflix would sort of talk about how, the best way to represent it in this show and to pick our moments when you saw it physically or on the outside and then pick our moments when it was a real internal struggle um, and, and you, you wouldn't show people how you were feeling. Um, but Jace, you know, he was just up for that challenge. Uh, which we were incredibly lucky to find him. And with something like this, you almost have to take extra care of the work that you're doing and to make sure that people that deal with this day-to-day -day are happy 
and can find something that they relate to, I think that that's important. And your cast and crew seem so empathetic to the people that deal with this on a regular basis, and I love that. And I really thought that added a personal touch to this series. I need to know about finding the character of Amara. There aren't a lot of people like her. So how did you guys find Sophie? Um, Our casting uh, people did a worldwide search for the part of Amara. Um, Because, you know, as you know, there there just aren't a ton of young, established actors who are in wheelchairs. And we that was incredibly important to us and to Netflix to find a young actress who was in a wheelchair who you know, could truly represent the character of Amara. It was such an exciting opportunity to be able to find that person. And you know, we watched a lot of amazing videos of a lot of amazing young kids. And but when we saw Sophie, it just clicked. I mean, she just was Amara. She had the confidence. She was smart. Um, also, Sophie showed us a clip of her singing in her audition, which we were totally blown away. And we ended up rewriting uh, Amara's arc because we had a, a different plan. But once we knew Sophie could sing, we were just so excited to put that in the show. So we have the whole um, school musical because of you know knowing that Sophie was such a great singer. So that was really cool. In that situation, when you're playing someone with social anxiety disorder or any other type of issue that someone may face, it could be overdone when it's portrayed on screen. But Jace did it perfectly to the point where he showed kind of like how the mind works. Like, wait a second. I think I got it. Oh, wait a second. I don't got it. And you literally saw how the mind works with it in those couple of seconds. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, because we have personal experience with it um, and we have our real Noah that we've been with when he has panic attacks and and then been with when we're just hanging out, being silly, having fun, <laughs> that we knew all those different versions and and how to play it at different moments with different people. You know, that's what social anxiety disorder, it's this irrational fear of being judged or humiliated in front of others. And it's different in different situations. And I think that's why it can be kind of confusing for people is that it's not always going to be the same and have the same result for that person. And also people have it at such different degrees. And and for, you know, some of it is for performance and getting up and doing a, a class presentation would be the real thing. And other people, it's could be ordering food at a restaurant. It's it really and and all of them are just as serious and should be taken just as seriously. But it's just not the same for every person. And there was a moment where one of your characters, Simon, was even unsure if he could say the term social anxiety. Even if he didn't have a filter. So he showed empathy, but he didn't know how to properly use the term. But that'll be a learning curve for them, for anyone, really. Yeah, I think, you know, for people with social anxiety disorder, people knowing you have it is also scary. You're trying to hide it so much. Yeah, because you don't know what people are going to say about it. What are they? Yeah. And then that's the fear of that judgment that, you know, you can't control. But then once they do know the feeling of relief, like there isn't an expectation for you to be quote unquote normal or perfect all the time because someone just accepts you. And we have an episode where in episode three, where Noah has a pretty big panic attack moment, a pretty big shutdown, which is true to Sam's younger brother. And that fear of, well, that's it. I don't have friends anymore. That idea that like, you know, you've sh- shown them what you think is the worst part of you. And that and it could drive them away. Yes. And that's, you know, and not, you know, spoiler alert, but that it doesn't. <laughs> that people can, there are people that you can show your true self to and good friends won't walk away and will get it. 
and it won't take away from the person they know you to be. As someone living with a disability, sometimes I have to deal with this every day. Where people have this preconceived image of me, where they have to talk to me like I'm a child. I'm sure that people like Noah, either the real life Noah or the character Noah, have to deal with things where they are in uncomfortable situations, but they can also live a normal life. Would you mind speaking on that? That was a big part of our show and why we tried, you know, yes, it's about his journey with social anxiety disorder and going back to school, making friends and and having his first crush and all these things that every kid goes through. Um, But that we didn't get hung up, like hung up on stuff with the friends. I mean, they were just friends who, you know, fought about silly stuff and hurt each other's feelings and forgave each other. And, you know, they, everything about their friendship Uh, was just the way all kids have friendships, you know, and that was really important to us. Be like, you, you, you should watch the show and want to be friends with Noah. Nothing about his anxiety makes you nervous about like this, this guy would be a great friend and same with Amara. Yeah. And if something happens, you're going to be there to help them. Yes. And that, that is our number one message is like, sticking by people, that idea, which we love from movies and shows growing up, that having a group of kids who have your back, who go on an adventure with you and are there to stand up for you. And like, I think that's something we all relate to. They can remind me of a film a few years back called Wonder. Yeah, we definitely use Wonder as sort of a reference when we were pitching it originally to Netflix, because it is that idea of it was a kid going back to school, you, you know, supportive family that was going to be there behind his side no matter what and the idea of like do i try to hide you know what i'm doing with it or i just this is me and i should be out there and and that's sort of you know the same kind of message we were trying to to do with our with our show um because it just and it's just hopefully inspiring you know anyone seeing it young old just if they have something that they're dealing with it you know it's okay get out there you'll find the right people that love you for who you are so we talked about the king Let's talk about the dog. Tell us about how you found Dude. I'm excited to hear this. Well, we, um, Good Dog Animals is the company and the trainer, Steve and Gwen, who, uh, Murphy is their dog. And we had a little dog casting session that was pretty much Murphy was the only real option there as far as how good he was. Cause he just already knew so many amazing things. He was so sweet. He jumped on our laps and, uh, Eric and I fell in love immediately. And he just, he's a rescue they found. Um, and, you know, he's very one of a kind. And he has, and what was so cool about working with him, like Steve and Gwen, you know, they, they had his basic stuff he could do, but then they would look through every single script and look at all the actions that are written in there for do to do. And they would practice those things. And if there's something that they felt like might be too hard, because, you know, sometimes when you're just writing stuff, you could write some crazy thing and they're like, wait a minute. In reality, I don't think a dog could really do this. So we'd have to talk to them and figure out the best way to make it work. But they were wonderful. And then what was so great about, about Murphy's presence on set, he sort of became uh, a support dog for everybody. And during lunch, there was a little trailer they had with multiple animals, dogs, and, and a cat that is shown later in the show. And everybody would quickly eat their lunch. They could go sit by the dog area and just pet the dogs and just feel great for the rest of the day, which was, it was a really lovely part of a extra bonus part of the show. I think one of the strongest attributes of this show is the family dynamic between the cast. You literally felt like they knew each other for years and were a close knit family. And I just wanted to tell you guys that personally. Yeah, I think that that's, that's awesome that that comes across because, you know, that was really important. This is, you know, the first time Erica and I were running our own show and it was super important to us to have that sort of dynamic on set because we we had, you know, Sophie Kim had never been on any sort of set before and Mauricio was a little bit more experienced. Jace had a couple of things. Laurel had one or two things, but it was a lot of newness. And so we wanted to make them as comfortable as possible because, you know, there was going to be some some you know, days where there's some emotional stuff they had to do and everything else. We just wanted to make sure they had the best summer of their lives. And, you know, Tom and Larissa 
have experience, obviously, in this business for a long time, and they were sort of, they'd be extra set of parents along with the already incredible parents all the kids have to just help if there was any bumps in the road that they could help get them through it. And it was really, you know, just everyone in the crew that we found was just sort of a wonderful, it was a wonderful vibe. And so it makes us happy that you felt like you see that come across on uh, on screen. Having a lot of kids on set, I bet there was a lot of laughter. Good, yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of laughter that, you know, sometimes you'd have to do a shot a couple of times because there's too much laughter. <laughs> but it was, uh, yeah, it, it, it was, I think from day one, it was a really sort of magical combination of everything. And, uh, you know, we're so happy with the finished product. And I do feel like, you know, you made the right observation that that contributed to the show being what it is. One of my favorite parts of this show, and one of the parts that makes me laugh every time without fail, is Duke's dialogue. How did you get Steve John to do the voice? He's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that we obviously super lucked out there. Him and Tom have worked together before. And, <laughs> and uh, we, you know, we, uh, casting Dude happened near the end of the post production process because, you know, we had someone on set sort of doing the voice just to keep it for rhythm and for editing later. But we knew we were going to hopefully cast someone you know, uh, of some fame just for that role. And so when we were just throwing out names, just, uh, Tom, you know, discussed how he, you know, he had told us that he's still friends with Steve and all this. And so we started, uh, Eric and I both were like, wow, he would be perfect. And thankfully it worked out. And, uh, I got to fly to Kentucky to record, uh, all the episodes with him. Cause that's where he lives. So that was a cool experience. I've never been there. And, uh, and yeah, he just was perfect. He just nailed the sarcasm of dude but also when he needs to be really sweet he i think perfectly got there as you know as well and i know this is probably a deep reference but i'm probably gonna go for it anyway <laughs> um steve john is no stranger to voicing animals he was in Stuart little a bunch of stuff no he did like dr doolittle too and i think he was in like chicken little uh yeah. Stuart little yeah he's been in like a bunch of so he He's a pro with all that. <laughs> One of the things that drew me into this show from the get-go was the parents. I love Tom and Larissa. How did you guys go about casting them? Well, I mean, we were big fans of theirs even before we worked with them, you know, because of that thing you do and Alex Mack. It was such a huge part of our growing up. Um, and we were lucky enough <laughs> that they wanted to be a part of this show. They were really excited about it. And I think why they're so good in this show, um, and so likable is because they're such amazing people in real life. So, and so much fun and so caring that it just, like we talked about before with sort of the vibe on set, it just shines through. Um, and they just had a great chemistry. I mean, so often you see, you know, married couples in a TV show or in a film and it, you kind of go, would they be married? What does this work? Does this feel right? And instantly they had this love for each other, this sweetness, this flirtation. It's like, it felt like these great parents who actually are still in love and doing the best they can and supporting each other. And that was really important to us because we wanted this show to be great for families. We wanted parents to want to sit down with their kids, watch the show and feel like they were enjoying it. It was jokes for them, characters for them, you know, writing the mom character in a real way where she gets jokes and she's strong. You know, our, our mom is supporting the family as a lawyer. All of that was incredibly important to us. And, and, you know, from the beginning, that was the goal. Here's a fun question I have for you both. What are some of your favorite lines from the series that stick with you, that you're proud of, you know, just favorite things that make you happy when you hear them? Wow, that's a, that's a good yeah. question. <laughs> yeah. Well, one line that pops out to me immediately just because our four-year-old says it all the time um, and was in like uh, an early version of a draft was, uh, I may be small, but most of my teachers are afraid of me. Um, and I think it's just because I, I, our daughter Addie is constantly <laughs> yelling that, um, so that that sticks in my head. Uh, and then I think for me, it's actually 
I remember when Erica wrote this line in the pilot, and it's always been one of my favorites. When, um, when on Friday, you know, again, trying not to spoil too much, but when Noah comes back into school and talks to Amara and Simon, and he says, "Oh, he couldn't find dude that night," and Simon tries to make him feel better by telling a story about uh, his cousin Tony's dog, but that dog did not make it back. <laughs> and that I love. I, I think that because that again, as I, I, I think I touched upon earlier, just sort of character-based jokes. It's just Simon always has good intentions, but sometimes just doesn't know how to deliver those intentions. And he's too honest sometimes. And it just comes out where it's not helpful. But it just, I think, perfectly captures that character. One of my favorite lines, and I don't even know who she's saying it to, but she's saying she has to do something. And she's like, don't wait up. That kills me every time. Her delivery is just so funny. Yeah, she's she's so there was another one similar to finding Sophie when we when Laurel auditioned, it was it, it clicked so perfectly because she is that care she's that sassy in real life. And she it, <laughs> you know, you needed a really smart, precocious nine year old to play that character, and we are very lucky to have found her. I really like seeing kids follow their dreams and I really like seeing the growth of kid actors and what they can do and bring to a character and she's definitely got it and your whole cast are going to be future stars one day no doubt about it well that's that's great <laughs> that's what we think too yeah <laughs> just wrapping things up here the healing power of dude is now streaming on netflix but where can people get in contact with you on social media if they want to share their thoughts? Oh, well, we're on um, Twitter and on Instagram. Um, my handle, which I think is the term the kids use, is uh, <laughs> doubleberg426. Um, and so, yeah, we would love to hear, you know, things about the show. And also all of our uh, Mauricio... Laurel, Jace, and um, Sophie are all on social media as well, mostly on Instagram as a way to connect to them. And Jace especially really has been trying to reach out to almost everyone that reaches out to him because, you know, this is all, you know, new to them, sort of explosion of fame. And so it's been fun to watch that. And then Erica, do you want to say? Yeah, yeah I'm, um, I think on Instagram, E Spates, uh, S P A T E S. And then on Twitter E to the Rica three two one, which I e love the- that Twitter name so much. <laughs> well, E to the Rica actually, Sam's younger brother Noah gave me E to the Rica. He used to call me that all the time <laughs> as his nickname for me. So that's it's sort of funny. That's where that comes from. Um, and yeah, we you know we've had parents and kids reach out to us about their kid having social anxiety disorder in this show, helping them have conversations about it, or the representation part. You know, people. This wonderful young woman reached out to me and she's in her 20s and had recently uh, gotten to a point where she needed a wheelchair. And she said seeing Sophie um, on screen, Sophie was like a role model to her. It just she just meant so much. And the just the feedback we've been getting from people has been amazing. It's ex- exactly what we were hoping for. Um, so, you know, we're, we're glad we're connecting and and it's starting conversations and people are feeling um, less alone and and more represented, which is really cool. As I've stated throughout this interview, thank you guys so much for creating this show. It really means a lot to me and many other people facing these challenges that they can see an image of themselves on screen in some type of way. So thank you for taking the time out. It's really been a pleasure. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. That means a lot. The DJ Bob Show. Pop culture.